things like that. We've had discussions on whether Rengar is worth playing over Kha'Zix, but if you're that good, you may as well. It's true. Well, he's not the only cat in the assassin pool. Uh, let's talk about a few champions we haven't actually seen. The Nidalee, it's something that we heard that Revolta is actually still liking despite the nerfs. I mean, we'll have to see if it comes up. Let's go ahead and take a look at our assassins. They're going to be hitting the rift, though. In the blue corner, representing Team Ice from Latin America North, it is in the top lane, Porky from Just Toys Havocs. Prowling the jungle, it will be Adi from Land Gaming. His mid laner, also in Land Gaming, it is Seiya. Evan RL, representing Just Toys Havocs, will make up the 80 carry role. And of course, there's Zool from Galactic Gamers. Just Toys Havocs is a great name, but we also have to look on the opposite side. On the red side of the red for Team Fire is the CB LOL All Stars from Brazil. And featuring in the top lane is Yang from INTZ. His partner in crime, obviously, is going to be Revolta, also from INTZ. Kami from Pain Gaming. PB0 from CNB Esports Club. And Dude, the French dude from Red Canids. Yep, as uh, we heard Atlas say, the most Brazilian French player, not just at this tournament, but just about as we can even find. Team Fire are in a massive lead right now in this tournament, six to two in points, and they could very well take every Assassin's Mode game here. All Brazil needs to do is finish it off, but oddly enough, neither of these teams have actually gotten a win on the board for their teams. Yeah, exactly right. Brazil could actually put in the extra work and close it out for Team Fire, but Team Ice obviously want to get one back for themselves, so a lot on the line for both of these teams, and we'll see how they execute on them and whether or not we will see that talent you were alluding to before. Yeah, you got to wonder if the pressure's going to be on Ladam North to try and snuff out the torch of Team Fire as we get into picks. I want to say bans, but uh, where's the fun in that when you've only got about... I don't know, 20-odd champions to choose from. There's definitely some variety in all of it. However, take a look as it's like off to the start. Ladam North, they have locked in something we haven't seen so far. It is going to be the Echo, but uh, fortunately, we won't see him playing tank. Yeah, uh, Evan RL can also pick, you know, half tanky items, glacial shrouds, things like that are always available for you to pick. Another thing that isn't really a surprise whatsoever is actually the Diana. I was shocked we didn't see it in the last game because of how powerful it has been today. Say is able to get that one for Team Ice. Yeah, we're going to have Rengar on Rengar in the jungle as well as both Adi and Revolta have picked that up and the LeBlancs are locked for the top laners. So a lot oh of boy. teleports on this squad too. This early game is going to get wacky. Interestingly enough as well, Kami has chosen to lock in the Kassadin and he's going to be playing that. I guess that's a historical throwback where Kami is just saying, you know, I used to be a god, I'm now a god again at Assassins and Kassadin was one of the OGs that everybody used to play in the middle lane. He is going to be against the Diana, which is effectively a free level six. And uh, Diana with a free level six, pretty nasty. Yep, we saw what could happen when a Diana gets unchecked on the map. A lot of mirror matchups, though. Two Pantheon supports. Normally, we've been seeing the mismatch with one in the top and one in the bottom. But with both LeBlancs going topside, this is going to be a little different. Yang is a terrifying player. I am not sure if I want to see what he's going to do with LeBlanc. I just, <laughs> Yang against Porky, I two LeBlancs in the top lane is a little bit weird to, I guess, expect. No one would have predicted that happening. I mean, he LeBlanc plays Echo lane. in regular. Yeah, but I mean, he's not playing Echo now. It's going to be the AD carry on the opposite side. But mm. two LeBlancs in the top lane, two Rengars in the jungle, a heavy hitting bottom lane with guaranteed stuns. And the interesting thing to me that we have to highlight is that they have two guaranteed stuns in a really, really strong duo lane on the side of Team Ice. I think we'll be in for those 5v5s as soon as the towers start falling down once again. That's the best part of it, of course. If you guys think that Team Ice can come up with a victory here and uh, at least take one win in the Assassin mode, hashtag LAN win is your cue at LOL Esports is the place. If you think that the Titans from Brazil are going to take this one, hashtag BR win at the same place. If Team Fire is going to keep on rolling and go 4-0 in Assassin mode, we're about to find out as we hit Summoner's Rift. As we hit Let it, we, also, uh, we have to scrutinize the skin selection here from Seiya. Perhaps he forgot the Diana has really cool ones and he's not Infernal. Maybe he's just trying to channel his inner faker. I just, like, Infernal's just too cool not to have. No, you're not wrong. There's a good reason uh, why, too. It even comes from uh, the same name team taking out the last All-Stars, winning the last All-Stars, I should say. Yeah, maybe he's just saying, you know, screw Team Fire. Can't it's have out for himself this game. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious to see what Kami does on this cast, and he's not gone for the teleport. He goes Ignite. We haven't really talked about some of the other selections. PBO on this 80 carry Ari. Seen a few different builds. Some AP, some hybrid damage. Yep, was the last to lock in as well on his team, so undecided perhaps, or just being slow. Locking the Ari means, I guess the standard bottom lane as far as assassin standards are concerned for a 2v2. It could be a little bit more challenging for Evan RL and Nezul to actually farm in this lane. I guess it comes down to how that level one progresses, as they are looking to be quite aggressive. Yeah, I think a lot of the 
X Factor is going to be the difference between Ner'zhul and Duke. Running the same summoners, same starting items. What happens Would when two Rengars ult? They can like, mm -hmm. can they see each other? And they're both invisible. Like, what happens ah. there? I think we'll have to just find that out. Yeah. Uh, for, I would imagine with the way this game should shape out, Revolta and Adi will uh, run smack dab into each other at some point. Speaking of which. As Evan is going to be escorting him up towards red buff. Revolta and Yang don't know this is coming. They found they're in. Oh, and they jump right for Revolta. Not even turned on the red buff till just now. And this is a bit of a pickle. Oh. Revolta jumps in, takes the red, and now it's Adi and Evan. Now they're out, but they jump right out the bushes. Evan's going to have to flash. Two flashes. So is Adi. Wow, so they go for the red buff for a very cheeky play. Of course, having a teleport for Evan RL means that they can afford to do things like this, but that does not work. Revolta with a trusty smite. And once again, Rusty, we are one glorious Thunderlords off uh, from something that I have not seen since the start of Season 6. Unfortunately, this teleport gets spent by Evan to go oh, back up to the top side. Okay, so we do have a top echo. It's just not who we expected. Okay, yeah. So LeBlanc Pantheon, Porky's decided that he's going to rebel and he's no longer going to be playing a, uh, a top lane position. That explains the teleport for the echo. It also solves a lot of problems. They've juked us. However, I don't like being juked. Seen a lot of LeBlancs uh, getting off some pretty... Uh, Impressive jukes this game, or this ser this entire tournament, we should say. As Revolta moves up towards the top, he's a little low on the health bar, and yeah, Evan he has is no stacks. got 100. Yeah, no stacks right now. Evan, no flash, I guess, is the big thing. Also has no teleports. Any damage they put down is meaningful damage. Yeah, he's going to dash, and the flash from Yang. They land the bola, but they just don't have any follow-up damage. But again, super meaningful. Evan, if he does choose to recall, will not be able to teleport back to lane. It's actually just really relevant damage, and it's also an advantage that Revolta is going to have over Oddy because they tried a really uh, cute play at level one by invading that didn't work. It's a nice attempt from the Latinor squad as Revolta heads back towards River and takes down Scuttle Crab. Consolation prize, but it can't fight back, unfortunately. Imagine if you had an Assassin Crab. What? That would add. That would add some complexity. Assassin Crab. Yeah. Also, why doesn't Scuttlecrab only go sideways? That is a really good Just question. consider that. It really should. It doesn't really scuttle, does it? Nope. Going back towards the bottom side. We've got an 80 carry LeBlanc now. I guess we call this a kill lane, but everything's a kill lane in assassin mode. Say is actually getting pushed back by Kami. This is a little bit different than we expected. Yeah, it's an Ignite on the uh, Kassanen as well, so he has a little bit more pressure. And does quite well into Diana this early also. Yeah, Corrupting Potion doing favors for him right now. Don't really expect too much gank heavy action down on the bottom side. Revolta and Adi were both set a little further behind. Where are you off to? They're going for a roam, though. Kami's got to watch his back. They've walked through two wards, and perhaps that's because the blue buff is available. But they're looking for something, but they are... They're, uh, yeah, they're, they're not going to get anything. I'm not sure what they're after. They are taking a lot of time here. They're Perhaps really trying just for a cheeky to deny play. farm for Cassidy. Yeah. Well, I mean, once Kami hits six, he's just not going to care about this at all. And he's been able to keep up in farm, so CB Low Squad lose nothing for this. They got caught in a tic tac toe game or something on stage and just kept clicking while they were walking. Forgot which lane they were in, perhaps the champions they're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately for them, again, nothing's going to happen. They did have it pushed into the turret so they can freely reset, but this is where they have to be backed by, so things work out okay in the end. I keep trying to compare the farm and then I remember Evan Earl's up top. It's a weird game. Yeah, Big wave building. They've definitely come in with a strategy. We'll say that much. Now, whether that strategy works, that's a completely different story. As CBLO built a big wave, they're shoving towards Porky and Ner'zhul, or rather they attempted to freeze it for just a minute. Dude's still threatening, but both Pantheons here, so it definitely becomes a game of chicken to see who can hop in first, or who can hop in after the fact and nail it. Revolta keeps clearing the crabs out. It's a very chill game. I'm not used to this. This is the most relaxed assassin mode game we've had. I guess there's just higher expectations to be placed, but Revolta had an advantage for some reason. That advantage is completely gone. The time that he has spent on that top side, perhaps looking for a gank, evened the jungle clear out. And again, a big thing that we are going to look towards when we uh, highlight the champions being played is how important level six will be. Diana obviously wants to sit back and scale, as does the Kassadin. And Rengar gets uh, a little bit more gank potential off when he does hit that six point. Yeah, that should be the cue for this game to bust open like a powder keg, but for the time being, they're 
Both teams are happy to bide their time and just shove minion waves back and forth at each other. A couple of Dorans bought on either side, and of course the Negatron Cloak finished up for Seiya. Still have to keep an eye on that champion for quite some time this Diana we've seen it bus games wide open meanwhile up top Evan continues to trade one for one with Yang who's been locked under tower and the teleport advantage starts to become pretty important here there's only one on CB lull side meanwhile Seiya and Evan both have it so both top laners I'm going to use air quotes when I say that and the mid laner of team Latin America North my immediate expectations go towards the red buff that Revolta is currently at on this Rengar so if Evan is a uh somehow able to be a really good top laner as well as AD carry, then we might see him ward soon in an area that will spot Revolta before he can even use his ultimate. Yeah, but Yang's jumped in. He's gonna land the chains, and Evan's half health. Can't even get the convergence off, and Yang just too slippery. Meanwhile, Adi and Seiya have gone on a roam here, but Revolta is playing around the, ring around the red buff, yeah. Oh, this is a bit awkward. Okay, so here's the answer to the question. It looks like you can't see the Rengar, and Kami can't finish the job, but Revolta finds Seiya on the bullet strike. They jump for him. Kami waiting to jump in, but Evan's gonna tag his way in. Yang's here as well. And he jumps. Does he have the damage? It looks like it. That is going to be first blood and some change. Oh, Audi. Revolta picks up Evan and gets a double to take down Audi. Blast cones his way further into the jungle. That's three kills for CB Lol. <laughs> what a disaster. Oddy revealed himself by walking out of the bush and Revolta just saw a free kill opportunity for another free kill effectively. And now fire the CB Lol team. They open it up. The best part about that is as soon as everybody backs, you can see them buying control wards and then I was about to laugh and be like, oh, that's a great reason. But then, oh yeah, that doesn't stop invisibility. Anyways. We do of course get to see this again. Rengar only seeing the Cassidy. So going in, Oddy making a big mistake as Revolta was directly behind him, and that's how this trade goes sour for the side of Ice. And this is where Yang comes in to seal the deal and find those kills. And we answered your question, Rusty. No, not Rengars quite. cannot see each other. They can. It's it's just the old change. Oh, they see the first closest person. Well, well I guess only if you're in the one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, that's what ah. we want. We so want the. We so Kami was Kami was the Kami was the one who was uh, keeping him stuck keeping himself in the front line, and that means that, of course, they were able to take a lot more out of it. So CB Lol jumps out to the first lead this game. Eight minutes in, and they're eyeballing Dragon. This would be the fastest Dragon take we've seen so far. And it's a mountain trick. If there's one thing Assassins cannot do, it's take down turrets. I'd imagine the more mountain drakes you have, the faster you can actually hit them, the one in every 100 sieges that you get. So it could be quite valuable. They may look towards it. Karma's going to pick up some honey fruit. Revolta takes down the crab. He's had a seafood diet this game, that's for sure. Uh, but the double kill certainly helps him out early on as he has the warrior enchant finished. It's going to take a little while for Adi to catch up to him. And the rest of Latam North are playing a little further back. Now, Jude is hidden here. PBO is just trying to be a bait. I don't think it'll actually work out for them, as Yang's actually mid as well. Mm, Seiya has got to watch his back. The man drop incoming will force him away towards the wrong tower. And all of a sudden, there are four members of Team Fire right on top of him. And Revolta picks up his third of the game. Yeah, they may be assassins, but they have a lot of mobility as a result of this. So there's no running away as Seiya. And we're not seeing a Miracle Diana performance early into this game just yet. They do keep taking him out. And again, Yang, a big deal, it's all. Holy moly, dude's gonna have to flash away, but he may not get away, I don't think so, as Adi will find him. Those Rengars are starting to come up big. They definitely are. Always a threat, as once again, Yang's just trying to do his best. He can wave clear and half health somebody in one go, because LeBlanc is a dirty, dirty champion. Yes, indeed. Uh... Yang is, like we said, he's, he's a beast, and he's gone for the Magic Pen Boots to start this game off. Still working towards his first completed item, and on the other hand, well, Evan's going to have a while before he gets up to there. He's had to give up a lot of farm just by going up towards topside, and you can tell he's playing a little scared of Yang. It also looks like a GLP 800 is the uh, item of choice for Kami. Not something you often see with Cassin, you usually want the Rod of Ages, but GLP immediately scales. Remember, it's Assassin, so you want to be scaled up as quick as possible as they all get their Ghost Blades around their first big item spikes. You want to be just as strong. And I was wondering why we were seeing a Cassidy at all, and maybe this is a supplement to it. Gank the lane, get it ahead at least a little bit, and then hit, let him start to scale up sooner. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. So keep an eye on Kami in that mid lane and see how his plan works out here. You can already see now, back towards the bottom side, PBO starting to get rolling. And uh, he's got a very interesting Ari build himself. It definitely does. We've uh, 
We've got an AD, Ari. Maybe it'll be a Hextech Gunblade one more time. Again, we've already heard uh, in the interviews that they've had, Brazil have scrimmed uh, Oceania and a couple of other regions, including Turkey. So the build could be consistent throughout all of them. Yeah. You might say contagious. Definitely seen a lot of Aries. <laughs> In that 80 position, and Adi is going to dodge away from Bola from Revolta. Gives himself up, though, but he's roaming with Kami here. And Azul puts the ward down and realizes they may have to back off this turret. It's four members down bottom. Maybe not, as there's not much wave to deal with. And if they are ever going to siege, it does revolve around having the Ari nearby, even the LeBlanc, perhaps, because they're ranged. And, you know, that's the single most important part before a Pantheon uses his ultimate to get in somewhere. These guys just don't want to give up the ghosts. Latin American North playing back and legs of tower damage be dealt to CB Lowell roves around. 12 minutes into this game, we've only got five kills. I mean, it is a really, really low kill game for an assassin. Yeah, it is. And Evan RL playing like a typical AD carry wood as it hits mid game. He's going to sit in the side lane. This time he just happens to be an echo. First tower, blood's going to go down too in the mid lane. So Evan, he's going to try to equalize here because there's no one to really answer him. But Yang and Revolta, they may be able to get up there in time to clear the minion wave away. Looks like he won't finish the tower off after all, so CBL is still stacking that gold lead up. Yeah, and just being invisible means that Evan has to show some respect. The ward is going to be cleared, so timing very efficient here from Yang and the rest of the Brazilian teams. Things looking good, honestly, for our red side. Yeah, there's really nothing to worry about for those guys, but we've seen these games turn on a dime. It's just they're not giving an opening. They're not giving a chance Who's for the Latin North team to really do much. Yeah, they're just, like Vicky said, just, you know, Laid back. It's a picnic on Summoner's Rift. An assassin picnic. And the menu is scuttle crabs. They really do like those scuttle crabs, actually. Well, vision's pretty key, pretty crucial when you have five roamers on each squad, you'd imagine. Speaking of roamers, Adi. Oh, he's a jungler. I guess that's kind of his job. Yeah. No, he's definitely going to try and do something. Of course, won't find it. Adi not being as efficient as Revolta in terms of the Rengar off. Unfortunately, we didn't get the LeBlanc off, so to speak, in the lane. We got juked, man. As we are, yeah, we all definitely got a pump fake, and they got around us towards the bottom lane, so he's an AD carry. Also, the Pantheon on Pantheon has not been as exciting as I anticipated. There's definitely nothing exciting about two Pantheon <laughs> supports. I will, however, pay my respects much more towards Jude than that of Nozul, simply because of the item build. Lethality is a really good scaling item in terms of levels, but you may as well just get all of the long swords in the world. Just be PDD. And just smack get the people damage sooner. Now. Well, we're starting to see items actually stacking up a little bit more. Yang's got himself a Morello Nomicon already now. Uh, the GLP does get finished. We're still waiting to see if PBO is going to go ahead and turn that Bilgewater Cutlass into an Hextech Gunblade. And then we might start seeing the rove around from CB Lowell as they still are sitting pretty on a 3,000 gold advantage. It is sitting pretty, but I'll tell you what they are doing. They're sitting boring. That's true. They need to work it out. They need to fight. Man up. Yeah, you heard it from Evan. You know what? It was Evan himself that said this is man mode. I am distinctly seeing a lack of that from him right now. Yeah. Well, we have to call him out when appropriate. And unfortunately, they feel a little bit more inclined to fight the environment. However, they might have the fight brought to them. CB Lowell moving in, but they're just only going to find a control ward. You can see Latin America, no, they're just melting away into the night whenever, whenever the Brazilians come calling. They're being afraid. And you know what? Assassins went ahead, usually snowball and win. And when there's five of them, that snowball's a little bit harder. So far, that's exactly what Brazil won. And it's the opposite of their opponents. Oh, dude, Fibio's checked out. He's just playing a video game. We're at that stage in the game. Pretty much. Get in there. Oi. I've already reverted to that. 15 minutes. I'm Actually, always saying does get finished. to be fair. Yeah, that's true. I guess we haven't reverted to anything. We've just uh, we've just gotten, we've pushed ourselves towards the oi stage. I am uncontrollable in my <laughs> Australian ways. Wouldn't have it any other way, Rusty. I mean, you could, but you're not going to. I don't expect it. What I do expect is more fighting. Come on, Ladam. Where's that aggression? Let's see it. You got a Rengar, you got a Diana. Here, though, for the Diana, they know he's taking the blue buff. Okay, oh, the man drop. All right, there we go. Take the blue buff away. And they just melt through Seiya. Jude even scumbag support steals it. Yep, Jude also doing a lot of damage, so take it for what it's worth. They find the Diana, playing it slow, cool, calm, collected, perhaps the CB LOL side is. But they're always making it work. They're the ones with the lead, and the onus is on the opposition side to try and make something happen. 
because if they don't, eventually the spillover will be too severe. I suppose assassins have to have some finesse, and you can clearly see that from the CB Law squad. Speaking of, let's see it again in yeah. the replay. And again, the ward does spot Sayer walking in here. The Pantheon ult was expecting him to run away. Doesn't matter. Oh! Oh, good night. All right. Catfight. Revolta wins. Revolta definitely does. He's a 4-0-2 Rengar. Was 3-0-2, to be fair. Doing a lot of damage. And they also got the jump first, I believe. There's not a lot of difference in items on them. An extra longsword and upgrade, about 700 gold of AD. Yep, mirror matchups is the, the purest form of outplaying your opponent. Revolta gets spotted on the tail under that ward, pinged out. But there's nothing Nozul can really do about it as we get 17 minutes into this game. CB Lol Squad just keeps on creeping their lead forward, but you can see them making the proactive plays. They're daring to step into the enemy jungle, and there just isn't an answer from Isis Squad here. Revolta's uh, making a return trip down bottom. In full vision, they land on Nerzul. Diud is able to pick the kill up. Revolta even tanks oh, it. Tower oh, shot! Oh. oh! All right, so Porky gets something back. They do actually lock it up, so Porky, well done. Having that Morello stops a lot of healing as well. Revolta had his flash. Chose not to use the flash, and perhaps it was the turret attack speed that got him. And as an end result, Rengar dies. The Kami's down here to reinforce the troops. Now, this should be an easy tower take now, even with only a few minions left. Kami's arrived on the scene. They pick that one up, and they just kind of slowly are rotating around and leisurely picking up kills where they will. Only mistake was Revolta overstaying as well. But... Yeah, and it was just a mistake in terms of uh, health calculations, perhaps. So two turrets to zero topside, the natural progression for the CB LOL team. As after they reset this wave, it could be even more so. There's no Drake to look towards. There's absolutely nothing else on Summoner's Rift for them to take. And once again, we do get to see how this one progresses, and it's on the back of the charm. That skin, by the way, incredibly hard to actually predict. Revolta could have flashed, could have done a lot of things. Oh. Part of me thinks Jude body blocked him. Disappointment. Momentary disappointment. It's all right, you're an all right bloke, Revolta. I'll forgive you. Once. It's a good compliment. Once. All right, 5K, though, is what CB Lowell have got in the lead. It could have been more if Revolta hadn't died there, but still. Seven to two in kills. They've got the tower lead. Yang is on the hunt here. Let's see if he can pick off Evan RL. Baited by the minions. Phase dive. He can't get out. That's half his health in a heartbeat. Yeah, and I mean, he's got an abyssal scepter. And still, all of this damage comes out of Yang. Perhaps this is the reason we're seeing less and less of the uh, echoes. This is the first one that we've seen in assassin mode as well. For those that were confused, there was definitely a scrying orb that spotted the uh, ward that he was mm -hmm. killing. Yang's going back in for round number two, but you can tell Elvin's already wise to this. It's the 80 carry mentality. Am I half health? Am I going to step forward? I don't think so. He might even try to stop this back. Nope, can't do it. But by recalling, if he does not teleport or ult, or he then he will that. run into a spot of trouble. However, now the ultimate is down. If I were the Pantheon or the Rengar, even from Revolta, I would be making a play and speak of the devil. After this wave is pushed in, you would expect it. However, really hard to push in an Echo. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to do, but there's only one outer tower remaining, so you can tell that's the objective. In comes the man drop, Evan. He's stopped up by the chains. Nowhere to go, and dudes on him. Tagging Revolta, and they triple team. And that was pretty clean, honestly, from the CB LOL side. It was coordinated. They pressed their buttons at the exact same time, so they're clearly sitting there saying, go. And all at the exact same time get that kill. Yep. Evan RL didn't know what hit him, so now four members strong. The rest of ICE is going to try desperately to stop the push here, but the Ostauer Tower is going to fall no 20 minutes into this game. CB Lowell clearly in the lead, but they do not push their luck. And the blatant disregard of all of these control wards that they do still have a lot of from the Latin American North team doesn't really amount to much when they're so defensive. They're not actually providing any vision or control. And as an end result, further and further ahead they creep. Yeah, this is the big problem for Latam North. They just aren't making any moves on the map. They're not They're not making huge mistakes, but the little mistakes they're making just keep on stacking up and eventually But they're just not doing just keep, anything. Yeah, just if you do just it. Keep getting pushed back, what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna get pushed back off the edge of a cliff. You can't just watch them win. You're assassins. You have like everyone does this on assassins. Let's be perfectly honest. You go zero three, you go to a side lane, you die about ten more times, but you really do give it a go in that side lane. They're just losing. Yep. Just man up. Just go. Actually We've gotta make go. something happen. We've got the score. You get 0 2 0. 1 2 0. 0 3 0. You need to just dive on somebody, all five members, but they're just not doing it right Press now. Press your buttons, man. 
All right, well, the dragon's going to spawn up in a minute. Would you guess it? Rusty, it's an infernal. Oh, it's yeah. going to get worse and worse for Latin America North if they don't start making moves. They're going to try to collapse here on Yang, but they're going to give up a dragon no matter what. Exactly right. So the Drake will go down. A bit of extra damage for an assassin-based team. Kind of scary. So a little bit. Don't be fooled, by the way. That did go on the other side, even though it showed on Latin America North side for a second. Baron's live, and oh, Yud is going in. Where's... He's gonna land behind oh. Seiya. Oh, the zoning man drop. Diving is Seiya, but exhausted immediately. Yang tags in. He's out. Chains were flashed. And Kami can't really close the gap anymore, but they burned a lot of summoners. Yeah, this time around was just Yud going man mode. Had the exhaust available, so can afford to do things like that to the Diana, who is 0-3, so doesn't have that instant burst that we were seeing from Syros in the LJL's Diana performance. It's a very different type of game than what we saw in the LGL. They get to hold out, at least. So that's like a minute of extra time bought. We're waiting for the Pantheon ult to be back up again. And Azul's got his. Problem is, say has got no flash. And he has just played an incredibly defensive Diana. Very strange to see. Honestly, I think that CBLOL should just do the Baron. Yeah, I mean, they got a 5-1 Rangar. They got do. a lot of damage. They've set their sights towards the bottom side of the map. Perhaps they get a pick before they make a play. I was just looking at their team composition. It's Kassadin can get over the wall. LeBlanc can get over the wall. Rengar can ult around, I suppose, and avoid wards. Pantheon can ult. Ari can. They can yeah. all just get inside the pit. Like, right in there. Now, there's not a lot you can criticize from the CB Lull team this game. The, the thing is, they've not really had to show anything. They made this game look like a walk in the park with knives. They actually have. Yeah, it's been way too casual. Super cash. You know, they've got their, their thongs on. By that I mean sandals. God, uh, my bad. I am Australian. I uh, figured that's what you were going for, but Porky was going for getting out of danger, and Revolta still finishes him off with the bullet strike. Say a DP's in. Finally, they've decided to make moves, but it just looks like too little and too late. Evan, Nerzul, Seiya, all on the chase, but it is just not enough. Revolta gets tagged by the bola. They, they jump for him, but that blast cone was clutch. Surprisingly clutch, almost cost Revolta more than he would have liked. Didn't get over the Dragon Pit with his team, but does get out safely. So CB Lowell can continue this onslaught as they're looking further, not finding. It's more about Kami. Yep, keep the split push casting going. Let's do this. The GLP is starting to pay work. Let's see if PBO can make a play. He tries and he stays alive, and Revolto tags in to kill Seiya. Meanwhile, down bottom, further Yang is looking for Nerzul. Still has a mini wave to work with, and Evan is going to have to chrono break. But Kami is on the chase. He dashes, he dives, but it's not enough. Kami with the big kill. Absolutely no chance, unfortunately, this time around for Evan RL on the bottom side of the map. Lots of fighting has continued to happen. And again, not recalling, not relenting, and just being constantly aggressive. The response from Lan, sit down and take it. Yeah, it's a little bit saddening, it's disheartening. I want them to do better. Yeah, CB Lowell just keeps slowly turning up the heat knob. And Latin American North are starting to crack under the pressure here. It is two kills, they are trying to make plays, but they're all reactive. The Brazilians are choosing where and when they want to fight, and there just has not been a quick enough response. And as a result, you can see the waves pushed in on all three lanes. There is, is no answer. Everything completely belonging to CB Lol. As he's using that to clear vision because that indicates the Baron is where they actually want to go towards. As we do get to see this fight again on the bottom side, it was surprisingly a bait. Say I thought he could get PBO. He could not get PBO because Ari has a lot of mobility and he's the one that gets baited in. Incidentally, of his own mistakes. Kami going for a turret. Evan thought he could take advantage of that fact and Ignite, kind of a big deal against an Echo who does go down. Yeah, and Kami just making that look simple enough. You can see why he took the build. He did, and Porky, he dives in, he dashes out. They tag in the rest, and Revolta might be isolated. This should be a big shutdown. Adi gets some revenge. A rare big play here for Latam North, but they still lose a tower down bot. Yeah, again, another movement from CB Lowell. They have the, the win effectively in their sights. They're looking for it. And getting the turrets is another step in that direction. Still, we're waiting for the items to be seen from the opposition side. They, maybe they can group up and make a big effort together because, again, assassins ahead or behind still have a lot of base damages. However, Seiya. Oh, there's the man drop. Liu just keeps on using that to zone out. Instant exhaust down. And they should finish him off. 
Jude got a little dangerously low there, but unfortunately for Seiya, he just couldn't take the 1v2. Starting to learn, starting to play a little bit better, and you can see him picking up a few more items. He does finish his Nasher's Tooth. We saw Evan had already gotten himself the Lich Bane, but you know, when you're 26 minutes into an Assassin's Mode game, you expect these items to be done a lot sooner. You absolutely do. You also expect more than 15 kills total in 26 minutes. A little bit more cool, calm, and collected from the CB LOL side. And from what I've been hearing, their scrims were definitely not like this, so I'm not going to put onus on them. They want it. And a Trinity Force, apparently, is what Ari wants. Yeah, that's uh, not a build I see every day. But uh, AD Ari and Mixed Damage Ari has been the build du jour. So PBO just says, let's have some fun with it and see what we can get. And, you know, to his credit, he uh, has definitely improved his score over the last time we saw him play. Last game it was, uh, well, it was normal summoners, but it was PB Ow. Oh. There you go. Let's see how this works. He still hasn't upgraded his boots, by the way. He just doesn't have to. Oh, Audi. Audi! He gets taken down. That's going to be a big double kill for Kami in the He's mix. 16. Looking for Nerzul, the triple kill. Chrono break back. Kami is still alive in this one. Porky picks up Gang for revenge. Revolta, the quadra oh, kill. No, Dan P do the fifth. Flashing, shutting down. <laughs> no. Seiya denies the Penta, but they still nail the ace. <laughs> Kami was already dead, so there was no chance of getting a Penta. Uh, <laughs> it was, that was crazy. <laughs> he already used Ignite. I thought it was on the last champion. Not exactly a denial. I'm going crazy, Rusty. You're definitely <laughs> going crazy, but Brazil still get another one team fight. They're now pushing towards the bottom side of the base. Would be an inhibitor at the very least. As five seconds roughly to the rest of the team. All right, we'll see if they can get it. Uh, they pushed off beforehand. You need to calm down. I do, man. I, I just wanted the action for so long and it didn't come. They do get, they do get the inhibitor. Kami makes himself quite a bargain, four for one. And uh, now on the chase, it just is too little too late. These guys just don't have the damage. They're getting kited out. Dude is able to dodge the chains. Adi does come around from the backside, but a pair teleport of teleports now him. as he jumps onto Dude, who man drops right on top of the teleport, and they knock down Seiya. That worked somehow. Revolta's still going. Yep, double kill. Revolta's found more, and he looks for Porky, and wow. nails him with He's the bola, well looking for another shutdown finally by Evan, who chrono breaks back onto Yang, and there's the it. action. What? They get they get them all down almost again. Here comes Kami. Uh-oh, Evan stopped. Iced by Kami. Three yeah. for four. Kami's definitely still looking for the Rengar. Note that he has no mana to use his ultimate again, so he has to show some respect here. It's a big Kassadin, but when the big Kassadin isn't there, Lan have a chance. That appears to be the opening, but we've suddenly gone from 2 and 11 in the, at the 25 or so minute mark. I've lost track at this point to 8 to 21 in kills. It's just cracked wide open, and here was one of many reasons why. Incidentally, making a great play here, dude, as he goes in, actually finding Seiya's teleport, gets the stun off and they instantly destroy him. He was using it, I believe, for that purpose, but at the same time was running. Revolta flashes because he wants the third. Sick bowler, but instantly dies. So no chance of a Penta this time around either. As a result of all of this fighting, Yang completely left alone to flash into a wall. Yep, Seiya and Kami are going to go at it again. But Dude's there to tag, and it really is no such thing as a true 1v1 in any of these. But yeah, it was a really, really nice ultimate by Evan RL. I mean, that kind of saved Land's chances there to, you know, leave one and one champion up on either side. All the same, Revolt is going to be able to easily solo out another dragon, so they've got themselves uh, a little disco in their step. Earth, Wind, and Fire now. Do you remember? When uh, this game was a snooze fest? The 21st night of September. Oh, that was a different line than I was expecting. All right, Seiya's caught again, but he goes on to Yang. Orb of Deception comes back around again, and PBO is out. Rengar's still looking. Of course, he can only see the closest member being the Ari. Doesn't know where LeBlanc is, but still searching. As it really just freaks you out, having this thing over your head and your screen change a different shade of color. It's been unsettling. Now, the Baron has been started, and it is just getting shredded by CB LOL. No chance to contest, nobody in the area. And they make quick work of it to pick up a big buff. Yeah, they absolutely do. The gold lead is pretty much insurmountable. They should be able to utilize this buff, as they're not waiting for someone to walk in and clear vision. They're actually waiting to use their ultimates in unison. 
They know they're on a control ward, so they're actually in a safe zone. And it's actually... Wait just a minute. There's still two sitting here. Dude, PBO... This is way too many people without yeah. having Rengar nearby. Kami might be caught. Just kidding. He is a level 16 or above Cassidy. Uh, yeah, no, nah, he's not caught. They're never really actually caught. Now they're just playing with their food. They are, actually. Still, Latin American North have finally found some fire. They've woken up a little bit, but it is just so late in the game to Both do it. Revolt to hops oh. in, and that damage is huge. But Evan Earl puts a bit back on before falling to Kami, and Adi is running. Nah, cannot get away. Yang picks up another big one. That is two quick kills, and it sends the rest of Ice scrambling back to their base. And the charm doesn't connect. It doesn't really matter because Ari at this stage is just a charm, but the rest of his team has definitely scaled. This Cassidy is a monster. And Kami just pushes forward on an Zul. Another inhibitor is going to get fired down, and they are on to Nexus turrets. Diyut is flashing and stunning, and they are dishing out so much damage back to the oh, yeah. Yang! tries to make a big play, but he ends up taking his own life. And now they've got no health left. Yanga makes the exact same mistake that, believe it or not, Mithy made on LeBlanc. He's now got a lockout period when he used the W, so there's no going back. You have to actually stay, staying under a, you know, a base turret. He's asking to die, so we do get to see the actual starting of this fight and Revolta's damage, namely 780 crit. Evan showing that he's got good mechanics still on the Echo to do damage, but Kami is a massive, massive Cassidy, And he's pretty much destroying everybody to ever exist. As that's a feels bad, man. Now, not as much as they have to feel bad in this game. They've done a quite excellent job at locking out Latin America North pretty much every chance they've got, but it is just so brutal. They are so close to knocking it down. If they, if they, one thing had gone different, they land that charm. Yang doesn't YOLO into the fountain. They pretty much win the game right there. Shout outs to Kami, good bloke, <laughs> big fan. Has Mijais. That's Top. what I want to see. Top tier build. I love this build actually. Do you think this game goes on a while longer? Not that it's going to. He uh, he sells the GLP and just like, I don't know, picks up something else. A death cap. Another, yeah. Fedius would be happy then. Fedius would be really happy. Well, he's not happy with this game anyways because there's no Katarina. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, I guess. No, that's fair. Yeah. But I'm happy there's no Katarina. Yeah, I'm okay with that, to be honest. Surprised, but okay with it. More surprised by this Diana. Seiya just has not been nearly as effective as we could have expected, but you know, maybe we're ruined a little bit by Sarah stepping it up. Yeah, so we're kind of at the uh, the point of the game where Diana can be matched by Cassidy in terms of split pushing. So there is no real 1-4 type of threat. Kami's just going to sit bottom. They'll send one or two to him, perhaps more to him. And that's where Brazil will just... This is actually fairly standard League of Legends. Yep. Well, it's definitely not standard Assassin's mode, but, you know, they've gone the more macro track this whole game. And as a result, CB Lowell have left very few openings. Remember the Latin using, to get back. Again, the Baron buff top lane inhibitor is already dead. They're playing it slow. Minions are about to crash. So this is the wave where you actually see them start to make some moves from the CB Lowell team. There we go. Just wait until there is no resistance off. And they just keep knocking down the inhibitors. That again, will be the no last resistance. one. On, they man. just can't do it. Just do it. This has been one of the longest games we've had on Assassin Mode 2, by the way. We're getting close to 35 minutes. Use your Pantheon button. Uh, the minions are all coming. This is the last chance saloon here. Double stack of cannons as well. Oh, supers, rather. Oh, Kami goes in. Porky! Right. Okay. Back to Fountain with you. Porky's name just added a couple of Ys to it. I don't usually spell well on broadcast either. Math is one of my uh, things I can't do. That's another one. Seiya now. This could be it. Low, they jumped the bola. Man drops incoming. Seiya has gone golden and they found you. They found Kami. But who's found who? Shutdowns are flying and the damage is just too real. He was trying for it, but that's a shutdown. Audi goes down and it's Seiya and Porky left to defend the base. Nothing left now as they take Diud for their troubles. <laughs> they won't finish the game! <laughs> they have to recall the fantastic sieging of assassins on Summoner's Rift is now entirely evident. As with two people still left alive. Uh, Revolta ignited Porky flashing. Oh! And he just can't do it! What? He just turns around! And he autos him! And that's the ace! That's it! 35 minutes, they just like, why not? Let's finish this game. It's all Nexus, boys. And CB Lowell walking the park, wiped the single beat of sweat off their brows. <laughs> we just watched an entire game of League of Legends in Assassin mode.
And that last 10 seconds has made me just distinctly hate Rengar infinitely more than I did beforehand.